Lord, you have been so sweet all day. Lord, tonight I simply come, dear God, to break the bread of life and Lord, just to ask you to touch us one more time as a, as a country, as a nation, as America. I just pray, God, that the, your will would be done, that your people would turn back to you. Oh, God, just keep touching us. I love you. Thank you, God, for a church that loves the Word of God, that stands on the truth. So, God, I just praise you. May we be the generation, dear God, that stands up. May we be the generation, dear God, that speaks up. May we be the generation that prays up. May we be the generation that seeks your face. Give us clean hands. Love you, Lord. I praise your holy and precious name. You are God and God alone. Yes, Lord. Yes. May we cast down our idols. I praise you, Lord. I thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer, believing God that you. I know you're here. I feel you. Your Spirit, hallelujah. I rest in your everlasting arms. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. I really feel that uh, before I go any farther, I want to tell you what God's been laying on my heart. Um, I'm not going to, uh, I guess, candy coat this tonight. I, I'm here for one reason tonight. And I hope you're here for what you're to us to lift God up. But also, I hope and pray that God will give me the words that I can clarify to you what God has laid on my heart as your pastor about our nation, about where we are as America, uh, Americans. And so I'm not going to uh, candy coat the word tonight. I, I really believe this is the, one of the most critical times for us as Americans. Amen. And uh, I will never, ever, 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 ever tell you how to vote or which party you need to stand for. All I'm asking you to do is stand for the Word of God. Amen. Amen. So I'm asking you to stand for the Word of God. So tonight, I'm, I'm just going to do a devotion. Uh, and God did give me a word, and, and I really believe this is straight from, from Jesus Christ. Um, but in 2008, I want you to think about this before I even start teaching tonight. In 2008, 80 a million professing Christians did not vote. 80 million professing Christians say, I love the Lord, I'm born again, I got morals and ethics in my life. They did not go and vote. Now you say, Brian, and I get in trouble for this all the time, but somebody's going to have to prove me wrong before I shut up. That our country was founded upon godly principles. Amen. And if Christians do not stand up and speak up for our Savior, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, I promise you the devil is going to do what the devil is going to do. Amen. But we must stand up for what is right in this country. We've got to do this. And I know people say all the time, well, politics and religion don't come together. I've never read that in the Word. I've never read that in the Word. So tonight, what my prayer is, is that through this teaching, that you'll get this Word of God, and you'll let God speak to you. And then what we're going to do after I, I give the Word, we're going to have an invitation. Uh, we're going to have Holy Communion. And we're going to come back to this altar. And because Tuesday is a big day for this country. If you are not registered to vote, go get registered to vote. Okay? Because here's the deal. I hear this all the time. People don't go out and vote. They're not registered to vote, but they sit and complain all the time. Amen. Amen. If you do not vote, you don't have no right in it. You just need to do this. It's the truth. So tonight, I'm going to give you a word that God has given me. If you have your Bible, 
I want you to turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. It's a very familiar verse, but I'm going to go down from verse 14 to 16. Because I think a lot of times we as pastors, we minister on 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, but we leave out verse 15 and 16. And those verses go hand in hand with verse 14. So, the Scripture will back up Scripture. Amen? Listen to this. The title of my sermon tonight is If. If. If, 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 if. If. So everybody turn your neighbor and say if. Yeah, it's a big title, isn't it? How many of you know it's a small world? It's a small word with a big punch. It's a, it's a small little word with a big punch. I wrote this down here tonight. I got a bad feedback, guys. The greatest need in America is not a cure for AIDS. I wrote this down. It's not flood relief. It's not an educational improvement. I believe in education. And I know we've got floods. And I know we've got a, an epidemic going around called AIDS. Or health care reform. America's greatest need, now don't you listen to this preacher tonight, is repentance. Is repentance. Is, is, is God so, come on, give me praise. Come on, give me praise tonight. Not that you've done something wrong and you and, and you feel guilty, but repentance means that you turn around from that situation, Amen. that issue, yeah. and you no longer do that. That's what repentance is. We've got a lot of guilty Christians that have not repented. If you truly repent, you, you are forgiven. You are forgiven of that. So our greatest need is, is not health care. It's not Obamacare. <coughs> It, it, it's not education, it's not flood relief, it's not a cure for AIDS, it's repentance. Truly, holy God, spirit filled, turning around. See, America has a lot of little genes. That's why I asked Beth to sing that song tonight. Lord, forgive us for we have unclean hands. Lord, forgive us because we have a lot of idols. And I know you say, well, Brian, I, I, I serve Jesus. Well, I'm going to ask you something. Do you have an idol in your life? And only you can answer that. See, I, I really believe this is the most crucial time for America. I said that, and I'm going to say it again. And not just for Tuesday, but after Tuesday. It's after Tuesday also, okay? So if you have your Bibles, real, I'm going to do a devotion. This is not going to be a preaching time, I don't think. But if, if it ends up preaching, yeah, i got a preacher in me. That's just what we're going to do, all right? So we may teach a little while, may preach a little while, but we're going to have, some, we're going to have a good time in the Lord's house. Second Chronicles chapter 7. I love this, this verses that I, I'm reading you tonight. Verse 14 says, If my people, God's not talking to uh, pagans. He's not talking to lost people. He said, If my people, if my church, well, that's what he says. If my people who are called by my name, hallelujah, there's only one name that you can be called by if you're saved, and that's the name of Jesus Christ. You may say, well, Brian, I, I, I'm a good person. I, I hell's full of them. Right? I know Bible. Hell's full of them too. But the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name, watch what he says, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked, evil ways, then, notice he says, then, you've got to do what I ask you to do, then I'll do what I told you I would do. You got me? Yeah. So listen, he says, if you do this, then, then, Will I hear from heaven and for, will forgive their sin and will heal their land? Look here in verse 15. I love this. Verse 15 and 16. Don't leave. Don't forget these. Now my eyes. Look at this. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Y'all got me to listen to me. I have chosen. Listen to this. I have chosen and consecrated this temple. This house, this, this place we call worship. See, a lot of people don't understand why a sanctuary is so important. Can I tell you a sanctuary is where the presence of the Lord dwells? Can I tell you that when, when they in the Old Testament they used to walk into the Holy of Holy and, and, the, and the temple, that's where God was at. So we have church for a purpose and a reason. Not to be the biggest church in Campbellsville, but we have church that we can feel the presence of God like never before. Amen. Listen to this. He says, if you do this, my eyes and your will be open and your ears will be attentive to the prayers offered in this place. This is God speaking. He says, if you do this, my eyes and my ears will be open. I know a lot of theologians, they'll sit there and go, does God have eyes? Does God have ears? That's what the Bible says. 
I have not been to heaven yet, have y'all? But this right here is our manual. This is what we go by. And if God says, I, when you confess your sins and you turn from your evil ways, God says, then, then, everybody say then. Yeah. Then, watch what He says. He says, then I'll hear from heaven and then I'll forgive them and then I'll heal their lands. And then my eyes will be opened. Then my ears will be attentive to what they're saying. And watch what He says, in this place, I have chosen to consecrate this temple so that my name, listen there, my name, his name, Jesus Christ, may be there forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen? Amen. My eyes and my heart will always be there. God says, that if my people do this, I will do that. If Elkhorn Baptist Church does this, follow the manual, follow my, my guidelines, follow my instruction book. If Elkhorn does that, I will do this. But so many people think they're going to live the way they want to live and act the way they want to act. And they think everything's going to be okay. I come to break it up tonight because that's nothing but a lie of the devil. That's straight from the pits of hell. That you can act the way you want to act and do what you want to do and take a chance on going to heaven. Don't chance that, church. Do not chance that. Okay? That's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a bad theology, but don't, don't chance that, alright? So it says, if my people. See, America was founded upon godly principles and America must get back to godly principles. <coughs> I'm going to say this until I die. Y'all bury me or the resurrection takes place. America was founded upon God, godly principles, the B-I-B-L-E, and America must get back to the B-I-B-L-E. Somebody <laughs> say must beg God for His mercy. We as Christians must, must get back to some old time praying. We as Christians must bombard the altar and hang on to the horns of the altar and pray like never before. Watch this. We can win. We will win. But I'm telling you, it, it's not a fly by the day or fly by the night gospel. This gospel is going to be here when everything else ends. How the grass fades and the weeds fade and are done away with, but the Word of God, hallelujah, will stand forever, hallelujah. Amen. This is one Word that will stand forevermore. It's the Bible. It's the Bible. I, I, I wrote this down. We need to turn from our evil ways. We need to turn. I'm telling you, if I've ever heard from the Lord, and I, and I, I take this lightly, not lightly, I take this with all that I am because I want you to understand that I really seek the Lord. But I'm telling you, if I ever heard from the Lord and, he, and God really spoke this to my heart, Bobby, America needs to repent. America needs to repent. America needs to repent. America needs to repent. He said, Brian, I'm doing good. No, you're not. You need to repent and get on your knees and pray to God that God will forgive you because this is we're all a mess. We're all a mess. We all need more of Jesus Christ in this house. You've not arrived. I've not arrived. America's not arrived. And here's the deal. Whatever happens this week, we will suffer the consequences either way. Either way, we'll suffer the consequences either way. Whatever happens. And I, I, I've had people look at me and they say, Brian, you shouldn't talk about the president. You shouldn't talk about voting. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. I'm telling you tonight, straight from the throne of God, if America goes against Israel, America must sign the death penalty. They'll sign the death I'm going to probably mess some people up in this house tonight. That's okay. Bring it on. You're, the president now is against Israel. And I, I'm telling you this because Genesis chapter 12 says, I will bless those who bless Israel, and I will curse those who curse Israel. You can mark it down. That, that we're America. You, and you say, Brian, well, you, you're speaking dead. I'm telling you what the Word of God always says. Right. America will not be on the map. <laughs> God's not going to bless people who curse Israel. That's His chosen people. That's His chosen people. We must stand for Israel. You say, Brian? And people say, people say well, who are you going to vote for? You haven't figured it out by now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll pray over you tonight. Lay hands upon you and anoint you with oil, put a cross on your hand. I'm telling you, and here's what people say. Well, Brian, you got a Muslim and you got a Mormon. I'm being honest with you. 
Y'all want preaching or y'all want fluff gospel? Here's the deal. At least a Muslim does not believe in killing people. Mormon. I'm sorry. Mormon. Hey, you know what? I can't get some of you jokes. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So let me get this right. Mormons. Mormons. I'm going to and laugh. Y'all been preaching one day and I'm going to preach one day. Yeah. <laughs> Mormons, at least Mormons have family values. Now listen, I don't agree with them either. Y'all got me? But I gotta make a choice and I gotta make a decision. And so you do too. You do too. And people say all the time, they say, well, the state of Kentucky don't count in the votes. Every vote counts. So I really believe what God is speaking unto me, and, and, and as your pastor, and I may have to take some hints for this, it's okay. Um, but I really believe where we at, where are at as America, we better be careful which direction we go on Tuesday. Okay, you, you just pray up. That's all I'm asking you, just pray up. Verse 15 and 16 said these words. said, once you do that, I'll open my eyes and I'll open my ears. I'll be attentive to you. And, and my praise will reside in the temple of Jesus Christ. It's amazing. One pastor said this. I wrote this down. If all the sleeping folk will wake up, if all the lukewarm folk will fire up, if all the dis dis uh, dishonest folks will confess up, if all the disgruntled folk will cheer up, if all the gospels will shut up, if all the entangled folk will, will make up, and if the true soldiers of Jesus Christ will stand up, if all the dry bones will shake up, if the church members will pray up, then the Holy Spirit will show up. to me. I put it in your bulletin last week. So Dr. Billy Graham. This man I believe is a spiritual giant of this whole world. And what Billy Graham said, I know he's not dumb. But I'm going to tell you something. If I had somebody to pray for me, I want Dr. Billy Graham to pray for me. You know, this man has morals and ethics in his life and and I, I try to take some lessons from him, but he said every time he would go out to any conference, any evangelism, any crusade, before he went into that motel room, he had a man with him. And before he went into the, bed, the room where he was going to be sleeping at night time, a man went before him to make sure that there was not a woman in there to set him up. This man had values in his life. And I'm going to read to you a, a letter that Billy Graham wrote at the age of 94. The legacy we leave behind for our children and our grandchildren in this great nation is crucial. As I approach my 94th birthday, I realize this election could be my last. I believe it is vitally important that we cast our ballots for candidates, listen to this, who base their decisions on biblical principles, who support the nation Israel, and I urge you to vote for those who protect the sanctity of life and the support of biblical definition of marriage between one man and one woman. Amen. Vote for a biblical values this November the 6th and pray with me that America will remain one nation, hallelujah, under God. Amen. So guys, if my people who are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. 
Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. You say, Brian, it's going to be a critical time. Yes, it is. But what I'm calling for in this house tonight is holiness. Cleanliness. I don't know where you are at. They don't want you to come. I don't know what, what's going on with you or where you're at. But here in just a moment, we're going to take Holy Communion. <coughs> here in just a moment, you're, you're going to be able to come to this altar and take the, the body and, the, and the, the blood of God. That's serious. And I am begging, I am pleading. If one thing we can do as a church, we can pray. Prayer makes a difference. My little granny... When I was a young little fella, she prayed for me. She anointed me with oil. Get to get off the school bus, and she'd have a chair sitting in the kitchen. And she'd say, "Sit down here, Brian Keith." And I'd sit down there, and she'd grab that oil, and I thought it was the craziest thing. She anoint me and dedicate me over to God. My granny died a couple of years ago. I walked in that room. My granny had Alzheimer's. And I walked into that room. And my little granny, she looked up and she said, there's my preacher boy. Amen. I would not take nothing for the prayers of God's people. I'm telling you tonight in this house, I felt this all day. I cannot wait till tonight. I, I, I just beg God, God, touch us one more time. Lord, may America feel a revival break loose like never before. The Bible says in, in Joel chapter 2 and Acts chapter 2 that in the last days I'll pour my spirit out upon all mankind. Upon all mankind. That tonight you realize that there's, it may be critical this week, but I'm praying that we come to God with clean hands, pure hearts, and we'll kneel down at this altar. I don't care if it runs all the way to the back of the door. I don't care if it goes out the side I pray it does. Oh, I wish that ABC and NBC and CBS and all the news stations could be here tonight and see God and people get on their knees one last time and cry out to God. Oh, I pray today that the new friends show up in church. It's going to take the preachers and say, oh, they believe in what they preach. They believe in what they pray for. Guys, I believe with all I am as your pastor tonight, we've got to pray for this nation. We've got to humbly come before God. And we've got to beg Him to touch us one more time. I believe it's a critical time. I'm not trying to scare you, okay? I'm just here to tell you tonight that no matter where you're at, God's want to hear from you. He says, if, 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 everybody say, turn it up and say, if again, come on. If, 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 and number one time, that's conditional. You can stay in your seat. You can stay where you're at. You don't have to come forward, but God says, if my people who are called by my name would come forth and humble themselves. Repent, turn from your evil ways. Then, I would hear from heaven. Forgive them of their sins and heal their land. I did not write that. Jesus Christ wrote that. So how about this tonight? Let's hold him to it. I don't know where you're at, what's going on. You say, fine, I don't feel like praying. I found out when I don't feel like praying, that's when I need to pray the most. When I don't feel like worshiping, that's when I need to raise my hand and say, God, hallelujah, I'm going to praise you anyhow. So no matter where you're at, young, old, youth in the back, wherever you're at, up in the, up in the sound room, I pray tonight, my God, may we repent. Repent. You say, well, I'm a good person according to your standards. The Bible says when you've got sin in your life, you're like filthy rags. You don't want me to go into the Hebrew on filthy rags. Because it would probably get me fired in this house. But it's true. So I'm going to ask you, as Beth plays, pretty simple tonight, are you prayed up? We need to pray. 
husbands, grab your wife by the hand. Pray. Pray for this country. Pray for this nation. Pray like you've never prayed before. Seek God. Cry out to the Lord. Find the Lord. I promise you, it'll be great. Come on. Cry out to the Lord. You may not feel like crying out, but cry out to Him.